um, I record these and I put them on my blog usually. Sometimes I just put them on my YouTube channel. If you have not found me on YouTube, it's under my name, but the links are on. The easiest way to find anything that I'm doing is just go to karamiller.com. And that's the simplest way. Everything is linked off of there and you don't have to try and remember a hundred different things. You just go there. And definitely sign up to get on the mailing list so that you hear about exciting adventures that are going on. Um, I didn't send this one. Facebook Lives, I just post in our group and say, hey, I'm going to do this later on tonight. Come join me. Facebook Lives, of course, are recorded and stay in Facebook. Um, I don't get to see your comments as much. I don't know why, but I just don't. I think because I'm doing this through my Zoom software, but I do that because I can give you more options. Like I can share my screen with you and do some other really cool things that I can't do if I just do the plain Facebook Live with my phone. So that's what I'm doing. Let me switch the camera here um, and show you what we're going to be talking about tonight. So tonight, oh, and you all know that it's like crazy time on the Stampin' Up! sites because the retired list came out. And if you look on my blog today, there's a post that shows you how to shop that. But Stampin' Up! has a new catalog coming out June 1st, and they are clearing out the shelves to make room for all the new things. And you'll notice all the bundles. Uh, if you look in the catalog, which let me just grab one. The retired list goes with the written catalog. If you don't have a catalog yet because you joined, you started shopping at Stampin' Up! with me, thank you, um, and you don't have a catalog yet, I know some of you do, but if you don't, if you go to my site, which again, you can get to caramiller.com, and you just click on the retired bundles, it's in the left-hand column, I can show you that screen actually, um, but if you do that, then you can see what is in it what's what's actually on sale and there's a whole bunch of retired bundles and the reason the bundles some of the stamps are staying some of the die cuts are staying but the bundles themselves will not be available after may 31st and you get a 10 percent discount with the bundle so if there's something that you love and i have this open to the fox and now as you can tell i'm just kind of like flame going through here um if you have it open if you um are in love with a bundle, now's the time to get it. The stamp set will still be available probably if it's not on the retired list, but the bundles will not. They are not gonna do bundles anymore because they're going to be doing different things. So the bundles won't be here, okay? I don't wanna spend time playing in the catalog. But anywho, that's what's going on with the bundles. If they have a little double star next to the retired list, and we talked about this the other night, how to do it. If you have a question about anything, just drop me a note and ask me, and I'm happy to look things up for you or figure things out. But anywho, this is what I got. I got my Foxy Friends stamp set, and I got my punch with the Foxy, the, uh, Foxy Friends. Okay, so what do I do when I get them? Honest to goodness, the first thing I do, besides opening them up and check them out, and I look at them and go, huh, Gee, I wonder what I'm going to do with you. You're really cute, but now what? Didn't come with the little instruction sheet that tells me how to put it together or what to do, right? Honest to goodness, the first thing I do is I go to Pinterest. Because the most amazing creative people and generous people have shared so many things with us that Pinterest is the place to go. So if you come to Pinterest and type in Foxy Friends Stampin' Up! cards, you will get an entire collection. Get some other weird stuff going on over here. But you get lots and lots and lots of animal ideas to go with a punch. Now we'll talk a little bit about how to actually make that happen. But look at all these ideas that you can get. If you click on this, there's a skunk and a cat and a fox, and a leopard, raccoon, bear, maybe that's a leopard, maybe that's a cheetah, it's a cat, anywho, reindeer, uh, super cute, even a dog, and you're thinking, well, okay, let's go, how do we do that? Well, again, it doesn't come with instructions, but 
We can figure it out. You can stamp your animal or you can punch your animal. Look at this. Isn't that cool? Some people do have links to their blog, but oftentimes, as is the case with Pinterest, you click on it, it's in another language, or the link is dead. So it is tough to, to use that just as your only way, but we're gonna use it as an, as an idea builder, okay? So we tried that. Let's stop this and get back to the camera so that you can see what's going on. Uh, I'm going to try refreshing and see if we've got any. Hey, everybody, we got a few friends here I can see. Good job. All right. So I can either just stamp my animal or I can stamp and punch. Well, before I start trying to create any real project, I'm just going to kind of play with it and see what I can do. So this is part of something I want later. First thing I did was. I just grabbed a stamp and stamped it and then tried layering on it. But let me show you what we're gonna do together. And then I stopped practicing and said, literally this is all I've done. Because I thought the best way to show you is to see, see how we do it together. So I'm gonna use this fox, he's a sitting up fox, and I'm gonna use this little face. See how teeny tiny they are? Okay, here they are, here's the fox stamp. And here's his face. All right. So I'm going to do the fox on a calypso coral, which is right here. And this is a photopolymer stamp. Notice there's a difference between these, and we've talked about this a little bit before. These are just the clear stamp, which is awesome because I can see through, I can see where to position everything, but it doesn't have any of the foam. On the, um, the red rubber stamps, let me just grab one so that you can see the difference. On the red rubber stamp, they come, even though I'm not using wood, they come with a foam backing. So you can see that those are thicker and they're squishy. The photopolymer is not like that. So that's why I use this. It's actually the piercing pad, but I have one that I use for stamping. And it works really great. It gives it a little cushion. It lets it, it soak in a little bit better. Just works better all the way around. All right, so Calypso Coral. I wanna make sure that I get my stamp good and inky. And once I do this, I flip it over and take a look and see, is it all really covered? Make sure I have good coverage. And then I'm gonna pop it on down. Not gonna rock it either way. I'm just gonna push with knife nice steady pressure and you can kind of see the ink make sure that my ink is all over the whole thing take my time and lift it up and you can see that i've got a really good fox fan really good fox now i'm going to take a scrap of, and this is on whisper white by the way I'm gonna take a piece of Whisper White and I'm gonna do the face because I wanna pop it up a little. I want him to have a little dimension. So I'm looking at it and there, I have 29 different stamps in here, but I don't have just a fox face. See, it's connected to the body. I have this kind of a solid over here, but I don't have this cool fox look. I have this one. He's a walking fox, or here's the sitting, but none of them have just this part, okay? So to get that, I'm going to punch, and I could do it right here, but I only want part of it, so I'm gonna scooch it down. I could do it on scrap paper, this part, but we'll let you see it. So I'm gonna stamp the ink up my fox again. Make sure I have good ink. And then I want just this top part of his head, this, this head part, I don't want his body, but I can't really get just his head, so I'm gonna do it like this. Make sure I get a good solid ink. And it did give me a little bit on here, but that's okay. I don't need the tail, so I'm not really worried about that. 
Notice that I still have ink on my stamp. I wanted to show you this too. This is the stamp scrub, stamp and scrub. We've talked about this before. It has a wet side and a dry side. Um, it's almost too big for the camera. Up in the top corner, there's a itty bitty little raindrop. And then on this side is an itty bitty little sunshine. You're going to spray the wet side. Hold on, I need an extra hand. Get off, come off, crazy little thing. <laughs> I can't get the can't get the plastic cover off the top. Come on, you can do it. Apparently, I'm weak tonight. Well, you're gonna spray it. Trust me. Let me do a different one. Hold on. <laughs> I can't get it to spray. Did you hear me spraying over here? You're gonna spray this side and you're gonna take your stamp, rub it off, looks brandy new, and then take it on the dry side and I'm good to go. Now, you don't have to do this every single time you stamp, like stamp, scrub, stamp, you don't have to do that. When you're done, when you're done for the night, you're gonna clean it up. This guy I'm gonna take and I want just his head. Now I could cut him, right? Oh wait, oh wait, I have a punch. Well, whoop de doo let's move him over. Open up the punch. And now I need to get him in here, line him up. And I can't do it with that hand for some reason. I know he's going to be upside down, but I have to do it with my right hand. Line up Mr. Fox's face. Stop having the shakes. That extra cup of coffee must have done me in. You have to hold it in place. When you finally get it there, quickly punch him. And now I have this perfect little fox face that's ready to get some eyeballs and a beady little nose. We all know fox have beady little noses, right? And what I'm gonna do with this, I just wanna test it to see what it looks like. Well, I've got this extra piece over here. I'm just gonna test it on that. Make sure it looks right. And it does. The cool thing about these is it's a tiny little piece of paper. If I mess up, I could just do another one. And then I'm going to line up his nose and see, I can see right down through so I can tell exactly where I want it. And press, do not rock, even pressure. And there's my fox. Is he not adorable? And now to get my dimension, I'm going to take my Oh, dimensionals, and I'm gonna pop those in on the back of my fox face. Can never have too many dimensionals. It's what makes your cards your cards and not something that you just bought. Line them up, and we're good to go. And now we have this fox that's dimensional and adorable. There's other parts to this that I could add. I wanted you to see this. Hold on. This just came out of the punch. This is one of the pieces of the punch right here. This is his tail. So I could add that and pop that up. I don't get this, this rough here. I don't get that. That's not something that comes out of the punch. I get a whole tail. So I could do his whole tail if I wanted. I could stamp the tail. Look, I have this tail punch right here. I could stamp that. So let's try that. The trickiest part I discovered is getting it back into the into the, um, yeah, um, into the punch because it's kind of a weird, a weird setup. 
So one way that you can do that is to take a piece of paper and build yourself a template, slide it down in all the way to the bottom, and punch, and then pop your template out. And you can see where you need to punch to get, the, where you need to um, stamp to get things to look the way you want. So, I have too many ink pads open. I am going to make a mess. So, if I set this up like this, for example, and I want this tail to go right in that spot, let's, I haven't done this. I haven't. So, let's see how this works. There's a first time for everything, right? So, let's try our tail. Yes, I have ink on me already. I don't know if this is going to work. I won't know until we try, right? I don't like that idea. I read this on a blog and I thought, well, I'll try it. I don't like that idea. I might use the template for something else. It would work if I was going to put it through a pattern paper. That would be cool. In this situation, I think what I'd rather do is punch. Let's do it over here so we have room. Is stamp my tail. And now feed that into the punch. I think that's going to look way better than the other way I was trying to do. I don't know why I do this every time and start out with my, in my left hand and then struggle, but I do. Okay, so there's our tail. And purposely, uh, people that have taken my cricket classes will say, I do this often. I will do something I have never done before and do it for you on camera. I am not somebody who polishes exactly everything that I do. I want you to see how it how it goes. You know, it might not go great. It might be an issue. It might work out better than others. As you can tell, this tail doesn't go with this fox. This tail goes with this fox. So let's punch him now that we have a tail. All right, let's stamp him and see what he can do. So this fox is bigger. He has cute legs too. Okay, so we have this dude. So my tail's going the wrong direction. This one that I just made and thought was so cute, it goes the wrong way. But it's gonna go, <clears throat> it's gonna go the right way for this foxaroo. Bear in mind, you're not limited to fox. Any animal with pointy ears and four legs is gonna work out great. What if he doesn't have really pointy ears? What if he has kind of rounded ears? Remember we saw a dog and a beaver I've seen done? Well, you just round them with your scissor. Okay, we're gonna double check, make sure we've got good ink coverage here. And we do. And we're gonna put him right here. A good, solid, straight, no rocking, just good pressure. And you can watch the ink cover as you do this through the photopolymer, which is awesome. There's my dude. Here's his tail. This tail, I obviously did this tail backwards. Why, <laughs> Why is this tail upside down? Hold on. Why is that tail crooked? There's only one way I can do it, right? Yeah. Apparently that tail doesn't go on him either. Where would this tail go? Oh, I, you know what? I would build him completely myself. Yep. So I have to build a whole fox. I can't use these cool little full on, I have to build my own. Okay, let's do that. Let's build our own. The other piece I want to remind you about in here is they've got these great trees, they've got a stump, 
there's leaves, mushrooms, there's lots of little cute things, there's stuff to make a reindeer. So lots of other things that can go with this punch. Don't be limited by thinking, well, I don't like fox, I don't really need that. I'm sorry, it goes with the stamps. The punch only does the fox. So where's the one that did all the pieces? Let's look at those. So we have a face. This is from the punch. A piece of this. A body. And I have these itty bitty, teeny tiny, let me get them up here. Two eyes and a nose, like minutely colored, tiny, tiny, tiny. Okay, that's great, but what is that? All right, well, that's a fox. And I have to think about, if I had done this in colors, this is gonna go like this, and that's gonna give the face. Then here's my body. Here's the tail. Now, where is my punched tail? The tail that I stamped is gonna go right here, and that's gonna work great. So now I go back to my stamp set, and I can stamp different pieces that I want. For example, here's a body. So I could stamp the body and then punch it if I wanted. I mean, honestly, you just have to start playing. And it's a lot like color forms. I am dating myself. But remember color forms and all the little pieces, right? I think this is just a really fun it's, it's not necessarily, you know, grown up. It makes you feel like a little kid. But how many people, how many cards do you make that you would love to do something really cute on? This is cute. All right, so I'm gonna go play with my fox, <laughs> see what else I can make, see what other things I can get in trouble with. Oh, one more thing. If you, we're in my watercolor class. Remember, you can always watercolor. You could always watercolor and get more detail on here. So don't be limited by just the stamp or just the color of your cardstock. You could always come in and add a little shadow to him on top of the stamp so that you get a different look. Maybe he's a little raggy. Maybe you want a little bit more definition. And then grab your blender pen. And I'm also gonna be picking up some of the ink when I do this too, but you're gonna get some really cool definition when you start playing with him. Remember to clean this, you just wipe it. Just draw on a piece, of, a piece of paper until it's clean. All right. I think blender brushes are back. They were out of stock forever, but I'm pretty sure they're back right now. Although things could change really quickly. I wish I was able to see your questions and I'm not. I'm sorry if I missed something. So if you had a question about what I was doing or thinking, what is that woman up to? Uh, <laughs> just drop me a note and I'll be sure to let you know or leave me a comment after this is over. The recording will be here. It'll be on the blog. Definitely leave a comment on the blog and tell me what you're thinking. Uh, I see Facebook comments, but remember they go really fast. So if you put them on the blog, they stay there and I get a chance to check them out. Alrighty. Have a great night, everybody. I'll see y'all soon. Bye-bye.